Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see in my hands right here and that you guys saw throughout the intro. This is the CMMG Mark IV V2 chambered in 22 nozzler. So of course we're going to get into a caliber debate. Don't worry, that is coming. But this rifle here uh, from CMMG, I believe was introduced like four or five, six months ago, and they were nice enough to send one out for this review. So I certainly appreciate that. Um, and I actually contacted the folks over at Nozzler Ammunition as well and got a couple different loads in to use throughout the review. So what we're gonna do first is of course, let the dogs take a look at it, make sure everything checks out and it has their seal of approval. Then we're gonna head back out to the range and uh, shoot some groups with it. Come back in, get into the details of the rifle, talk about the ammunition a little bit as well, and then at the end we'll wrap it up and let you know what we think of it overall. We have a couple different loads to test out the accuracy of this rifle with. Both are from Nosler. One's a heavier weight and one's a lighter weight. We're going to kind of see what it prefers, at least in this case anyway. So on the rifle, we have the Bushnell. This one is one of their engaged scopes, 4x16, and uh, sitting in an arrow precision lightweight mount. And uh, that's pretty much it. The first load up will be their 77 grain, so one of their heavier loads. And uh, target downrange 100 yards. We are using a CTK precision rest and uh, super high speed stock right here. We'll see how it does. load one more round because I'm kind of thinking that first shot might have been a cold war shot. That's why the variant. We'll see real quick so we'll shoot a six rounds to see what happens with the last five. Yep I think that's what it was. So next up we're gonna go with the lighter load. This is the uh, Nosler Trophy Grade 55 grain ballistic tip. We got it loaded up here in uh, one of the Arms of America mags. I believe these are made by Elander. So. A few different mags we're testing here in this review as well. I think I got one more until five, I'm not sure. We're gonna go for it. Let's go check it out. Completely my bad as a shooter, I thought that we were up here in the corner uh, for that first shot. I was just looking at the target wrong apparently. But anyway, we got a six shot group, so we're gonna roll with it with the 77 grainers. No matter how you measure it, all the way center to center is right at one inch with those. And then over here with the 55 grainers, looks like we might have opened it a touch. Yep, with the 55 grain, we're right at an inch and a quarter. So either way, shooting pretty good, even with a six shot group. Getting into the details of the rifle, we'll start out at the rear and sort of work our way forward. The stock comes with a MOE rifle stock from Magpul. So this one here is a pretty cool stock. It's similar in terms of length to the A1 stocks for those who are familiar with that. I tend to prefer that personally over the A2 length and then it has this little storage compartment. If I can actually open it, push that button and then there's a ton of room in here as you guys can see um, to store cleaning kits or anything else that you might want to store in there has a sling attachment point here on the bottom or the toe of the stock and then of course we have the ability to add a quick detach uh, sling point which it does come with i just never actually installed it but you can put that one either here or up close to the receiver as well 
Moving forward to the receiver, it is made of 7075 T6 aluminum forged, so mil spec stuff in terms of that. And as you guys can see there on the bottom of the magpo, we do have a slight flare to it, which I do like. Um, the trigger guard itself is the Magpul MOE1, and that gives you a little bit more room there in the trigger, so that way if you're shooting with either uh, gloved hands or if you're just somebody who gets the bottom of a USGI trigger guard rubbing on your finger like me, um, that is a nice improvement on there. So the grip itself is the Magpul MOE grip, probably the most popular AR grip in America at least, as far as I know anyway. And the trigger on this particular model is awesome. So this is the Geissele SSA trigger. So I mean it's just phenomenal. Anybody who's familiar with Geissele triggers or who watches the channel here frequently knows I am a fan of the Geissele triggers and the SSA is a very good one. So it has a slight bit of play here in the beginning. It is a two-stage trigger so you get that first stage out of the way and then right there at the end it's just going to break super super crisp and super light right at about three and a half pounds and then once I release it you'll see a very crisp reset as well. There you go and then you're ready for the next shot to break. Just a phenomenal trigger. So all in all, you absolutely cannot complain about that setup. The upper receiver is also made of 7075 T6 aluminum. You guys can see there, it does have the M4 feed ramps in there. They align with the M4 feed ramps on the barrel for reliable feeding. And we do have a forward assist, which does make me happy. I know some of you guys think you don't need it, but I dig it. The carrier is made out of 8620 steel. It does have a phosphate finish with the exception of the gas key as well as the inside where the bolt rides. Those are chrome lined. And you guys can see there we have pretty good staking there on the gas key. So nothing too fancy there, nothing to write home about, but also nothing to complain about. The charging handle itself is made of a Forge 7075 T6 aluminum mil spec in that regard. Again, nothing too fancy. Now the bolt itself is made of 9310 steel. So the debate between 9310 versus 158 Carpenter will probably go on forever. However, this is my understanding of it, as has been told to me by people who know a lot more than I do, is that the 9310 steel, um, if properly heat treated, is a little bit stronger than the 158. So for those of you guys that are in that camp, you'll be happy to see this one here is, is a 9310 bolt. Now, uh, when these first came out, and I'm saying 9310 bolts, it was post Sandy Hook, and a lot of people had some bad experiences with them, and there were some reports about them um, that they weren't working as well as they should be and other things like that. But what I found is uh, most of those were heat treated in the exact same way that the 158 Carpenter Bolt was, and that caused the problems and caused some brittleness, and now they realized that's probably not the way to do it, and they have their own heat treating process for the 9310 bolts, and um, everything I've seen in the years following has been good. I have several 9310 bolts and haven't had any issues out of any of them. The handguard the rifle ships with is the RKM-14. This is CMMG's proprietary handguard. I've used it on several rifles here in the past, never had any issues with it. Um, it should be noted that these are also available in MLOC configuration if you want to get one with that. I believe it's like $20 or $25 more to go with the MLOC over the key mod. But again, I've had no issues with it. In the rear, we do have a QD sling swivel there if you guys would like to utilize that, and that is at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions. Underneath that handguard is this 24-inch 416R stainless steel barrel that you guys see here. This one obviously has the fluting all the way down to help alleviate some of the weight that would come with such a long barrel. This rifle, um, as it comes from the factory with no optics or anything like that, weighs in right at 7.5 pounds on my scale, so not too heavy, particularly with this longer barrel. Now the barrels themselves on all the... Um, CMMG 22 nozzle rifles have a medium taper to them, so they're a little bit thicker in the rear and then taper out forward. I believe they offer them from 18 to 24 inch models, so this would be sort of the longest one. And of course on the end here we do have the target crown on the end of the barrel. All the other models will have a threaded barrel, so that way if you want to use suppressors or anything like that you certainly can. But this one here is sort of designed for the precision long range shooter, and um, that's what you get with this one. So it does have a rifle length gas system in it so overall it's a relatively soft shooting uh, rifle but one thing i wanted to point out when i was reading on some of the reloader forums is that some people were saying that uh, for their longer barrels like this i believe white oak armament makes one in 22 nozzle and stuff like that uh, folks were saying that to reload what they were doing is they found that there was the, the brass would come out in better condition if they put an adjustable gas block on it and sort of dial it down a little bit I didn't have any issues with it. I didn't see any brass damage at all, but I'm just pointing that out because I'm sure this particular rifle will probably be more popular amongst the reloaders, um, which we'll get into here in just a second. So if that's the case, a little bit of adjustable dial dialing on the gas block should dial it down and keep your brass in tip-top shape for the next time you reload it. 
Now we're going to get into the caliber debate, which I know some of you guys have been waiting for. So um, the debate is probably already going on down in the comment section, which is awesome. You guys are certainly encouraged to do so. Um, but basically, the 22 nozzle was designed by the folks at Nozzle Ammunition to be the most powerful centerfire rifle cartridge that they could design that would reliably function in an AR uh, pattern rifle. So there's nothing in terms of conversion that's required to change your 556 or 223 rifle over to 22 nozzle outside of just dropping a new barrel in the barrel and then the magazines which we'll talk about here in just a second are all that's required otherwise it will work just fine now i should also point out that it's not a safety issue in terms of a you know if you chamber say like a 223 into the 22 nozzle or vice versa because the folks at nozzle designed the cartridge so that you can't chamber a 223 rifle cartridge in it and you also can't chamber a 22 nozzle rifle cartridge in a 223 or 556 chamber so in that regard uh, there's no safety issues like you could have with 300 blackout and some other cartridges but basically the 22 nozzle measures about the same length as a 223 and 556 but it gets about 25 percent more case capacity so that more case capacity gives you the ability of course to add more powder which gives you the ability to drive the cartridge harder um, so really you guys can see some charts that we're putting up here and uh, basically what you're seeing is that in a lot of ways this cartridge is somewhat in between the 556 and the 22250 so the 2250 250 has been a popular cartridge for a lot of folks who like to do barbet hunting or have some sort of added uh, capability over the 223 at distance, which the 22 nozzle does as well for sure. So if you're looking at like a 55 grain uh, bullet, you're going to be able to push this one pretty fast. I did a chronograph test over on my B channel if you guys haven't seen that yet and uh, the 55 grain was getting over 3500 feet per second and the 77 grain was getting over 3000 feet per second so uh, the equivalent bullet is what we have here this is a, a 77 grain 223 round here from Fioki, and to be able to drive it that much faster um, really is kind of cool but i do think me personally a lot of folks who want this cartridge are going to be going with the 55 grain projectiles just because they want that speed right so the folks who want speed for varmint hunting or anything like that i think this is going to be an attractive option for them because with the 22 250 at least as far as i know anyway there hasn't been any successful designs that will allow you to run that in your standard ar this on the other hand does so that's certainly a good thing um, so for those who are interested in reloading like we mentioned earlier the folks at nozzler do have brass available for it and it'll take your standard 22 projectiles so any of them will work in there just fine so the brass and dies and all that stuff are already over there if you go to i believe it's 22 nozzler.com also all the reloading recipes and with various types of powders are in there so you guys can work up your load at least have a baseline anyway to work up your load for the rifle should you choose to do so so that really is it now whether or not it's going to be the greatest cartridge out there and the next big thing who knows right i've been at this game for a while but not as long as some of you guys but longer than others and i remember a few years ago the big debate between 6.8 and 6.5 grendel was buzzing around and uh, a lot of people really thought the 6.8 was going to be the big one but as you've seen over year recent years rather 6.5 has sort of won out so i know there's some folks out there saying the 22 nozzler is inferior to the 24 valkyrie i believe it's called from federal that may be in some regards but i also know that a lot of people said that about 6.8 and it really hasn't panned out that way at least in terms of popularity so uh, the 22 nozzler has the support these are available like i said um, in terms of all the reloading components over at Nozzler, there's tons of cartridges or rather companies making rifles chambered in this cartridge. So Colt Competition, Noveski, Stoner, Warsport, um, Barrett, North Tech Defense, Proof Research, uh, Bear Creek Arsenal, and I'm sure some others are already chambering rifles in Scalber. So it's not just CMMG doing it on their own. Uh, there are other options out there for those that want to continue or expand their um, line of rifles that are chambered in 22 Nozzler. The rifle ships out with this mag that you see right here. This is the uh, 6.8 mag from CMMG. It's marked CMMG there on the bottom. And um, there are other options out there available uh, if you guys want to pick something up. So 6.8 mags are what they recommend for it. These are the PRI mags in this one here. You can get 26 rounds in there, and it feeds reliably with that. So if you guys don't want to have to stick with a short mag, that one is an option. We'll put a link down below for that. And then also I have some 6.5 Grendel mags here. These are the uh, Elander ones, and this is a 17 round mag, and I also have a 10 round mag. 
that you guys have probably seen throughout the video, and it's given me a grand total of zero issues with it. Now, um, everything I've read online says to use 6.8 mags. I'm just telling you from my personal experience, I've used these Evander 6.5 Grendel mags and had a grand total of zero issues like we mentioned. Now, the reason that you have to use uh, 6.8 mags rather than 2.2.3 or 5.5.6 mags is just because that case is a little bit fatter and uh, it just won't have enough room in the mag as you guys can see here with these cuts that all the 6.8 mags have won't have enough room in there and won't feed reliably if you guys want to use the 5.56 and 2.23 mags so you do have to pick up some extra mags if you want to use this caliber. We hit most of the high points but there's always stuff that we need to discuss um, that we didn't do in the close-up portion of the review so first and foremost is going to be reliability we've had a grand total of zero issues at all out of this rifle it's eaten everything we've fed it and that's been several hundred rounds of the nozzle ammunition 55 grain and 77 grain so can't complain about that at all of course we use the magazines that we just talked about the three different variants and it's eaten everything that we've given it now one question i got a lot on social media was does it have more recoil with the extra velocity? So the answer to that, simply put, is yes. It has a little bit more recoil, but it's not bad at all. The AR-15 does a great job at soaking up recoil, particularly with the rifle link gas system and this uh, Magpul MOE rifle link stock. It's, I don't want to say it's imperceivable because you can notice it, but there's very little difference there. And I don't think anybody out there who's shooting AR-15s regularly is going to mind it at all. It's not off-putting at all, at least not to me. So accuracy, you guys saw the groups that this thing put out and one thing I should mention that happened well after we shot those groups is a few weeks later I was out there and I had a shootsteel.com target out there at 459 yards which was uh, the first time I could really stretch this rifle out at somewhat long distances and this thing with the 77 grain shot a three and a half inch group so that's definitely sub MOA and that of course is with wind and everything that you get out there at those distances so it's probably a little bit more accurate than what you guys saw during those groups but I don't cherry pick groups here on the channel it's just not what I do um, so it seems to do well in that regard. And cost on this one, this is a, sort of their premier line with the V2. They offer, um, like I said, different barrel lengths. They offer different combinations with triggers and furniture and all that stuff. I believe the lowest MSRP that they come in at, they come at, in at rather, is uh, $1,099. And this one here is MSRP right at $1,450. And to get the Cerakote on there is a little bit more. I think it's like an extra $150 as well. But if you look around online, you'll see several places do sell these, not just CMMG on their website, but other places will sell them. And generally, you can get them for a little bit less if you sort of are patient and shop around. But for the price point, I mean, they're very nice rifles, as you guys can see. You get that glacier trigger with it. You get the Magpul furniture. You get the 416R barrel, which is one of the steel types that I do recommend here on the channel pretty often for AR barrels, free foot handguard. And um, I mean zero failures of any kind in terms of reliability, so we can't be mad about that. Overall, it seems like a pretty good rifle now, whether or not you guys want to get a 22 nozzle and get a new caliber in, like I said, who knows, that's for you guys to decide. But in terms of complete rifles right now, CMMG is probably putting out more than anybody else. Like we said, there's other companies that are doing it as well. But these seem to be the most popular ones, at least as of right now when I'm filming this review. So if you guys have any questions that we didn't cover in the video, you can always post down below in the comment section as always. Like I said, I expect a furious caliber debate down there in the, in the comment section as well, guys. But uh, you can also, if you don't post down there, you can also uh, post over at my Facebook page. That's generally speaking the best way to get in touch with me if you have a question that you need answered. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel yet, you need to do so if you like what you saw here in today's video. And even if you didn't, you can still hit the subscribe button. I won't be mad at you. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.